It's 12.15. Okay, um, so first of all, I'm sorry, this is uh, basically exactly last year's lecture and there are also not many exercises in there because until this morning I prepared the Matplotlib lecture. Until this morning I looked at GitHub and saw that that was last week's lecture. So um, sorry that there won't be many exercises, but it's going to be fine. Okay, um, last week was about Matplotlib. This week is about pandas. So um, the lecture is basically um, taken in huge chunks from this Jake Van der Plaas, uh, Python Data Science Handbook, like many lectures of the future will be, because Rüdiger loves that guy. OK, um, pandas. What do we need pandas for? Pandas is a library for fast and efficient computation on big data sets. So that means every time you work with big data sets, you want to work with pandas, because that's what pandas is made for, and that's where pandas is really fast and everything else is really slow. So when we talked about NumPy two weeks ago, um, I said you want to use NumPy all the time. Now I'm saying um, uh, you want to use pandas all the time. Where is that? Well, pandas basically is only a wrapper about, around NumPy. So pandas uses NumPy um, arrays, um, but provides additional features, like for example, um, database, uh, relational algorithm, like in database frameworks, or anything you know from spreadsheet programs, and just way more functions, and it's just way, um, the overview is way easier than in NumPy because everything has its labels and so on. But internally, Pandas uses NumPy and provides thus the same features as NumPy and more. Okay, so um, importing it, well, uh, just as we had the convention that we import NumPy as NP, we import Pandas as PD, and because, like I said, uh, pandas underlyingly uses NumPy and uses many, many NumPy features and functions. Um, we want to use, we want to import NumPy all the time and we import pandas as well. Okay, now um, I said two weeks ago that a NumPy array um, can have arbitrary dimensions. I think the highest number of dimensions is 256 or something. Um, in pandas, you generally work only with one or two dimensional data. Pandas does provide um, objects for more than two dimensional data. Um, but they're rarely used, and in that case, if you actually work with them, you want to use other frameworks than Pandas. But Pandas is perfect for this one- and two-dimensional data, and basically every kind of data set you had most of the time is at most a two-dimensional data set, because you have, come, you have some kind of input, which is a vector, so you have many features in the one dimension, and then many values of that features, and that's basically two dimensions. And then the output is, for example, only a series, because you have only an index, and um, your target or something. So in Pandas, we mostly work with one and two dimensional data, and I'm going to explain only the one and two dimensional cases. Okay, so Pandas does have um, two different objects for this one dimensional and two dimensional data. The easiest one is a series, which is simply a one dimensional array of index data. So, like I said, um, it is basically like a one dimensional NumPy array, but we have indexes. So we create it using. Um, well, uh, calling the pd.series on, for example, a list. And this here converts a list into a pandas series. So if we look at the type of our data, it's a pandas.series.core.series.series. Like I said, underlyingly, um, NumPy, uh, pandas uses NumPy, and we can extract the underlying NumPy array using data.values, as we see here. So this data.values is an array of type numpy.n-dimensional array. So underlyingly, we created a numpy array, but additionally, uh, we, we have additional features, we have additional methods, we have additional stuff um, in our series. For example, we have the index here. So pandas, as we see here, has an explicit index, which it even tells us um, when we print it, and we use this. So the index is an array-like object, which is, of course, its own type, pandas.index. And if we look at the index of our data, we see that this is a range index starting at 0, going into 4 with a step of 1. So 0, 1, 2, 3. Um, yes, and it's of type pandas.range index. And well, if we, can, we can convert it to a list, and then we simply get um, a normal Python list. We can also convert it to a NumPy array, and then we have the index as NumPy array. OK, and then. In essence, basically, um, our pandas um, series behaves just like a number array. So 
we can, for example, uh, use the square bracket notation and slice. So this gets our data from the first until extrudingly the third element, which is where this is the first and this is the second. So these two elements are the ones it gets. Um, and if we look at the type of that, we see that uh, pandas underlying D also uses for its numbers, it uses the NumPy types. But like I said, um, it has many more um, methods and attributes than um, pure NumPy, and we're going to look at a few of them in the next one and a half hours. Okay, so generally we see where that this what we had so far is basically one dimensional NumPy array. So, and well, that's mostly the case, but it's a generalized NumPy array because what we have here, the difference is our index. Well, the NumPy array has simply this zero until whatever the number is index. Um, Pandas has um, an explicitly defined index associated with the values, which is not necessarily zero until something and not even necessarily numbers, but just something I can use um, to get the data. So, um, we can, if we create a new series, we can explicitly provide an index for our series um, doing this. So here we see that we created four numbers again, but the index C is A, B, C, D, or rather A, B, D, C, because it matches the um, elements to the indices. Okay. Um, we can even change the index afterwards by simply setting the attribute data.index, and then we have a new index for our data, and we see here that the data at the index B, which is this one, is the same as the data at position one. So pandas differs between an explicit and an implicit index. The explicit index here is the one we set, which is B, and the implicit index is the same you would use when you index NumPy arrays, which is this is the first element starting at zero, so this is this element. Um, this is a bit confusing if you have um, numbers as indices, which is why we normally don't use this square bracket notation, but I'm going to get to that in a second. Okay, um, so when an explicit index is present, it is preferred. So data at the position 3 is, so 0, 1, 2, 3, we would expect from NumPy that it would be the 1 we return, but instead we get the both values where our index is 3. So data at the explicit index 3 returns us a new series, um, which we see if we ask it. What about the type of that? So this returns a series, not just one value, and it uses the explicit index for that. However, oh yeah, I did that right there. Why did I do that again? Um, however, if we would slice, then pandas would normally use the explicit index. Isn't that confusing and shitty? Yes, it is. That's why there are um, the lock and ilock attributes, which explicitly tell uh, pandas if you want to use the explicit index in the case of lock and the implicit index in the case of ilock. We'll get to that in a second. So. We saw that this here is basically, well, a generalized NumPy array, right? So we have an index, and underlyingly it uses NumPy, NumPy um, arrays anyway, so this is basically like a NumPy array. However, we can also see a series as a specialized dictionary, because a Python dictionary works just the same, just the same way. We have an index and we have some values. In a Python dictionary, the index must be, um, uh, is, is an object, and then the values can be just any kind of object anyway. Pandas basically does the same, but specialized in the sense that um, your, um, like you have to have the same type of object in all your elements. Which makes sense, if you remember two weeks ago in NumPy, when we did something with Python lists, like summing up all the values or creating the mean of our NumPy list, of our Python list, um, it took forever, way longer than NumPy, because Python has to type check every single element here. Pandas doesn't have to type check because pandas only allows type values in there, which is why pandas is far more efficient than a Python, array, um, than a Python um, dictionary. And if you want to have something efficient, if you want to index something efficiently, and you know you have only numbers or only whatever as elements anyway, 
you always want to use the Pandas dictionaries, like orders of magnitude faster than a Python dictionary. But the ener analogy counts, and if we see, so let's, for example, make a population dictionary, which maps some American states to their population in, I think, 2010 or something, and we can create a series of that. So now we have our series, which has as index the names of the corresponding states and as values, well, the population. Um, and we can now get from this population, we can get population relation at the position Texas, no, this, ah, this, which yields the um, population of Texas, just like a Python dictionary does. And like a dictionary, though, um, we can, for example, slice because Python dictionaries are, like you cannot assume that Python dictionaries are sorted from Python 3.6 or 7 on, they actually are, but um, as you want to have some kind of backwards compatibility, don't uh, assume dictionaries are counted in Python, uh, are counted or um, are ordered, but um, Panda series obviously are ordered because well, they are basically a number array, and because of that, we can do, for example, slicing. So I want to get the population from California until Illinois, which is, well, from the first till the last. What do we see here? Illinois is included um, because if we slice using explicit indices, the last index uh, is included as well because, I don't know, that's why. Okay. So let's think about a second for uh, about how we construct series objects. So the data can even be a scalar. So if we have a list of indices, then the data can be scalar, and the same data point will be repeated for every index we have. And um, the data can be a dictionary, um, in which case it sorts the dictionary as we see here. So um, the keys are sorted here. Sorted. Oh, it's not sorted. It keeps the original order. Okay, and we can make our series to a dictionary explicitly by simply calling the to dict method, which makes our series to a dictionary again. Okay, um, as much for the one dimensional um, series, we will get to a lot more of that, of course. But uh, first of all, let's go for our data frame object. So Pandas has the two-dimensional object, which is the data frame. Like the series object, it's basically, again, a generalization of an array or a specialization of a dictionary. And we can see it as both things again. So the word data frame, if any of you knows R, um, that's basically taken from the language R. Um, and basically, all what, all what Pandas does is just um, trying to be com compatible to um, R's language features, but better because it's Python and it's a more general purpose language anyway, so it's better. Um, so we can again see a data frame as a generalized array in the sense of um, that we have um, basically uh, just, as, just as we have a two-dimensional array as an ordered sequence of aligned one-dimensional columns, that's basically of our data what our data frame is. So a data frame is a sequence of aligned series objects in the sense of they sharing the same index. What did I just type? Did I just, oh yeah, just remove something. So imagine we have our area, area dictionary again. So this here is a panda series, as we see. We created um, it using the series constructor. And now imagine, um, so this here is now the area. We have our population before we can create a new data frame using our two series and even the scalar that all of these um, states are in the, USA, uh, in the USA. So what we see here, we created basically a data frame from multiple series and this is what it is. Like a data frame is just a series, uh, is just, um, are just a couple of series which are aligned. So we look at the um, D types, we see here that our population is one series which has one D type. Our area here is another series which has another, which has the same D type in this case. And our country is a third series of the type object. So not all the values in our data frame have to have the same D data type, um, but 
only uh, the columns have to have the same data type because this is what Pandas internally does. Like it sees a data frame as just a collection of series which are the columns. Thus, the series have to have the same data type and all these are thus of type object and the others can be of another type, for example, int. So, what does this look like? Well, like a generalized dictionary, right? So we can access, for example, this data frame at the position California, which would return us this series here by creating it. We could also return it at the position, uh, uh, position population, but from just here, this series. And then, um, well, we, get, um, key, we have keys and we get series and we can index them again and we have a two-dimensional um, thing we can access. Okay, um, let's sort it at first. So easy method for that, sort values. And we can even tell by what we want to sort. And if we want to sort ascending or descending, so let's do that here. So the most popular state from these four states is California. Um, what we can also do is we can get, so if we want to look at, uh, So states population, so if we just index our, um, our data frame here, we have to index it with the columns because like I said, underlyingly, a data frame uses the columns as series, so this is just a collection of series in the columns. So if we want to access, um, so if we want to index it, we have to index it by the column, which is, um, Probably counterintuitive a bit, um, but of course there's a way to also get the rows. Um, but if you simply index just at one position, you get the column. Okay? And this here then returns a series, as we see. This is a panda series. And for example, from this series, we can uh, figure out the index where this has its max. So IDX max, this is basically the arc max returning um, the position of where the population is maximal. And this position is the index, which is obviously California here. And then, for example, what we could also do is we could get um, our state at the log at the position. So this uses the explicit index explicitly. Uh -huh. um, and get, so states, this is basically the same as if we would get states at the position um, California, which gives us this series here. So again, if we try to do it like this, this doesn't work because like I said, if we explicit, like if we simply index it here, it wants to give us, um, it looks into the columns instead of the rows. Thus, if we want to get a row, we have to do it using our explicit, explicit index here, like the dot lock, so states dot Oh, this doesn't uh. yeah. Okay, um, and then like I said, uh, pandas just gives a many additional um, attributes to our uh, underlying number arrays. So for example, we have the index, so this simply returns us the indices, which we know already. We have the columns, which are, so the indices are the ones uh, which are vertical, the columns are obviously the ones which are horizontal, and the values, again, is a number array. So this underlyingly uses a two-dimensional number array. In fact, it doesn't, because um, if we looked at the um, data, okay, the stats of D-type object, so if it converts it to, um, so if we call the attribute values, this converts it to a number array, um, and thus, it has to convert these ones here into objects too, because well, if it wants to make, wants to find the lowest common denominator of strings and integers, this is simply the type objects, because strings need to be of the, de of the data type object anyway, right? Okay, but yeah, this is underlyingly a number array. So, what do we see here? The data frame can be thought of as a generalization of a two-dimensional number array, where both the rows and columns have a generalized index for accessing the data, 
which are the index and the columns. Okay, but we can also see a data frame as a specialized dictionary. So where a dictionary maps a key to a value, a data frame maps a column to a series of column data. So if we ask for the area attribute, we get basically what we saw before, which is our area um, series, um, which we just created before. So indexing data frame square brackets gets a column, that's annoying. Okay, and yeah, it underlyingly uses a series. Good, how do you create data frames? Um, well, we can create data frames, for example, from a single series object by simply providing it um, the columns. So this used to be, so if we look at population, this is a series, the series doesn't have a name, and the only thing we add here, if we make this series a data frame, is where we add a name for this column. If the series had a name already, we wouldn't even need to add that, and we just made it made a um, two-dimensional data frame from a one-dimensional series. So this is basically only one-dimensional tool, right? Okay, um, we can create our data frame from multiple series by simply concatenating them on the axis equals one, which is columns. So here we create simply two series, and here we simply say, well, you're just literally next to each other, which is then of type series, uh, of type data frame. Yeah. Oh, by the way, if you um, um, Jupyter Notebook renders data frames really nicely, um, but only if you use it as the last statement of um, your cell, right? So you know Jupyter Notebook returns, just prints or returns the um, last element of a cell um, as long as you don't suppress it using, for example, the, um, the semicolon. Um, but if it's a tuple, then it won't render it nicely anymore. So if I simply return this data frame and something, um, Jupyter doesn't know how to render it anymore. If I print it, it's also not nicely rendered. Only if it's the last element of a cell, then Jupyter renders it nicely, basically the output. So this here is the input of a cell, and this here is the output of a cell. And this is everything which was printed in between. So yeah, looks nice if it's the last element of a cell. Okay, um, furthermore, we can create um, a list of dictionaries to our data frame because, like I said, it's a generalization of dictionaries, basically. So um, we see here we have a dictionary which has a value for i and for b, and we have another dictionary which has a value for b and for c. And if we create a data frame out of this, uh, pandas will automatically assign a value of numpy dot not a number to the ones where, well, there was not a number. So we don't have a value for C here, so this is not a number. And in our second column, so in our second dictionary, in second volume, um, we don't have a value for A, which is why this becomes numpy dot not a number. Um, yes, as every single column must, so we see here that this column here is 1.0, this column here is 2 without the point zero, and this here is 4.0 again. Why is that? Well, because, like I said, every single column must have a consistent data type, and numpy.nan is float, interestingly. So it must convert every row where there's a numpy.nan to uh, float because otherwise we wouldn't have a consistent d-type. So. And if we wanted to get the rows, pandas would need to coerce um, the numbers explicitly. So in this case, we wanted to get, where did it go? So um, in, if we wanted to get uh, this row here, would have integer float float, thus number needs to convert that to a float. Okay, um, last way I think to create an, um, a data frame from a two-dimensional number array, so this here is um, just a um, very specific index for pandas, so a date range, which starts at the day 2013, like the 1st of January 2013, and makes six days. We'll get to that next week, how you create a time series and stuff where you need the date range, but this is just a specific way of creating a pandas index. And then we create a data frame using these six dates and a two-dimensional number area of, say, of shape six times four, so we have six rows, which have the index dates, and the columns are obviously four ones, 
and have the label ABCD. And just like that, we can create also a two-dimensional, um, a pandas data frame from a two-dimensional two number array. So these are obviously just random values. Okay, um, yeah, I have almost no exercises, but at least I have a few. Um, this is one, create a data frame. Create a data frame, that a data frame. <laughs> create a data frame from the given dictionary as well as the qualifies list with the given indices. Okay, so there are probably many correct solutions. Um, I have two. The first one doesn't even use NumPy at all. And the second one doesn't use um, Pandas, I mean, at all, um, which is simply a new, I think it's Python 3.5 or something, language feature, that we simply add live these two things to a new dictionary. So this here um, creates a new dictionary which contains all the values of the first one, which are name score and attempts, and all the values of the second one which I just created in you. So this is simply a new Python dictionary. Um, and then we can simply create this data frame from this dictionary using our labels as index. Um, or we create, for example, um, our data frame at first from the exam data and then simply add the new column, um, which is called qualifies and contains the list qualifies. Two of the ways, um, probably many more ways um, how to create uh, this pandas data frame. I just wanted you to create one yourself. At least think about creating it. Okay, um, yeah, the pandas index object, um, we've seen um, that, well, the uh, series and the data frame contain an explicit index. And what is this explicit index? Well, we could basically see it as an immutable array. So we can explicitly create an index. So this pd.index creates a new index of type pandas.something.index. Um, and if we try to assign values, well, it says, well, I'm immutable. I don't, you can't assign values to me, so we can't do that. Um, and if we create a series, we can use, basically use this index. So this here creates a new series. We could also have a zero here because um, scalars are fine. Um, with the index int, which is our index from here, which works perfectly fine. So even index objects even have a name, so we can assign um, our name to index. The attribute here is called names because there's a thing as multi-index where you have um, multiple, um, we'll get to that in a second anyway. So you don't give every single value of these indices a name, but you give just this one index object a name or if you have multiple dimensions. Um, of index, uh, indices, then you give the main the dimensions, but not the values. Okay, and if we um, create um, our series from this named index, our series basically even has a name, so if we created um, um, a data frame from this, this column would have the name index. Yeah. So um, it Make, so they have attributes like the size, the shape, the number of dimensions, the data type, just like number arrays. And while viewing them as immutable list makes sense, we can also perform set operations on indices, which is a really useful thing, and we will do that um, later on when we want to match, for example, we add two data frames, um, then Pandas simply looks at the indices, where well, can I add them? Do they have the same index? Because this is what Pandas does. And for that, it needs to um, support set operations, which it does. Okay, um, next big topic, data indexing and selection. So 
basically the indexing and selection, so the indexing works the same way as a NumPy and supports um, the same things as NumPy indexing does, which is, for example, also slicing, masking, and our famous fancy indexing. So um, to remember that, let's make a new NumPy error here. So this is pure NumPy, and we want to take those values of the second and fourth column, which is second and fourth column here, so all rows of the second and fourth column that are divisible by three, so all the ones for which it holds that um, where the modulo, um, that the value module three equals zero, we take the ones which are where the second and fourth column, which are divisible by three, so this is this three, this nine, and this 15. So this is um, this is basically normal indexing as well. So now this is slicing because we take a complete slice here, right? This is slice. This is um, fancy indexing because we have a list of indices. And this here is masking because we create a Boolean mask and only take the ones um, which correspond to this mask. NumPy indexing. Right. So we can do the same thing in Panda series and data frames. So the patterns are basically um, the ones of NumPy though there are one or two differences. Okay, so let's start with our one dimension series object again and uh, go for data selection in series. Well, if we see a series as a dictionary, um, where that works really easy. So like a dictionary, the series object has a mapping of a collection of keys to a collection of values, which means the corresponding functions work just as well. So we create a new series with the indices A, B, C, D in the correct order this time, and we can use the same operators we can use in Python. This B in data works because our pandas.series um, object has, our, has the Gunder method data dot underscore underscore contains underscore underscore and then we can ask for some B which is the same as this one. So B in data works because um, our pandas data frame, uh, panda series has this Gunder method, right? Um, and then we can also, for example, get the data.keys like we can in a Python dictionary. And this basically returns the very same thing as the index. Data.index and data.keys, same thing. And we test that where the errors are equal in this case. So we can have data.keys, we can have data.values. Nope, now it's an attribute. And we can have data.items just like. Yeah, and this is now, this is, like I said, there are a few caveats. I have no clue why items is a method and um, values is not. Ah, because values is the explicit thing. So, but yeah, same thing as NumPy lists, just uh, as, as uh, Python dictionaries, same attributes besides a few caveats. For example, that items is a method, whereas values is not. Okay, um, so, but we can access the items and convert them to a list. So, um, so the data.items returns a zip object and the zip object can simply be converted to a list. Um, and then this look at data again is basically every key with its value. Key and value, key and value, key and value. And just like a Python dictionary, we can assign values to indices, even to new ones. So there, was, uh, there wasn't the index E before, but we can simply set it just like as if it was a Python dictionary. And this here, again, why does this work? Well, because there's somewhere the uh, set um, element method, which basically allows this syntax. OK. Um, series can, however, again, also be seen as a one-dimensional array. So slices, masking, fancy indexing works just as well. So if we have our data again, we want to slice it from A to Z, A to C, we can do it like this. And because we use the explicit index, we don't use a simple number, um, this includes the last one, which is C. Um, we can also slice by implicit integer index. So data from zero until two gets the zeroth and the first um, element and not the second one because if we slice by, explicit, by implicit index, um, the final index is excluded from the slice because fuck you, that's why. Okay, um, masking, same thing as in um, NumPy. So we want to get data at the position where it holds that 
the elements are bigger than 0.3 and smaller than 0.8. So this here is a Boolean mask. This here is a Boolean mask. This creates these two Boolean masks to a new one. And thus, we can simply get data at this Boolean mask. And we get the values where the mask is true. So note that pandas, however, matches. So if we create this Boolean mask, it still keeps the indices here. And that's like the real important index of num uh, difference of NumPy and pandas, because pandas always matches by its explicit index. So if you lose elements in between, if I deleted this B here, um, and I don't know, appended a new index F um, with either false or true, in NumPy what would happen then if, is that all these ones would go one above and the mask would be like false, true, and then the false, false, and then the new value. And thus I would get not the B and the C, um, but I would only get the B because, like, uh, because this would be here, yeah? and this would be this false, so I wouldn't get the C. But pandas matches by the explicit index, which is A, nothing, C, D, E, F, and thus, which is not go one above, but match by the index, blah, blah, blah. We'll get to that in a second. That was harder to explain than I thought. I will explain it later anyway. Matching by explicit indices instead of by implicit index, which changes something sometimes. OK, um, I will get to that later. Uh, fancy indexing works just as in NumPy. So we can have a list of indices. So this is, I don't know why it's called fancy indexing. It's not all that fancy, right? You just provide a list of indices. And then you return, and then it returns well the um, data frame at or the series um, at these indices. Okay, um, so yeah, creating new series um, with the indices explicit here one, two, three, four, and then slicing it from the first until the third element, we get well. What do we get in the end? We get this 0 0.5 and this 0.75 get the indexes 2 and 3. Boy, this is confusing. Do we use the explicit index or the index implicit index? I don't even know right now. Isn't this annoying? So if your series has an explicit integer index, an indexing operation with not a slice but with only one index, we use the explicit index, whereas a slicing operation, like we did here, we use the implicit Python style index. Why? I don't know. But this only tells us one thing. Um, and that is, well, this is that it's shitty, and that we don't want to use it, and that we don't, we never want to be uncertain if we use the explicit one or the implicit one. And what does um, Python's Rüdiger showed it to you last times? What does um, the, mant uh, the, the, the mantra of Python say? Explicit is better than implicit, right? We want to be explicit here, so please always be explicit. And this is why this lock and i lock attributes exist. So the lock attribute, note that it's an attribute, not a function. So we have to index this lock attribute and not call um, a function using um, parentheses. Um, lock allows indexing and slicing that definitely and always refers, refers to the explicit index. And even so, no matter if we take just one element or if we slice, and i lock is the very same thing, only we always use the implicit index. So I don't want you to. I don't want you to use this here. Always be explicit. Explicit is better than implicit. Not in the sense of you always that you always should use the explicit index. Oh damn, that's confusing. But in the sense that you should always be explicit about if you use the explicit one or the implicit one. Right? Okay. So stick to the rules. Use lock or i lock. Damn, this is confusing. I didn't think about how confusing this was. Okay. But yeah, I think the explicit index makes sense most of the time. OK, um, so as much for data selection in series, um, let's go to um, data selection in data frames. So like I said, our data, like I said, a data frame is basically a two-dimensional structured array. So let's make a new one. So we create a data frame here from these two series. So this is the one series. This is the, third, uh, the second series. And the third series is simply this T, which has a T in all rows. 
Um, I will get in a second why I did that. So scalar is also fine. And if we index a data frame, we generally index the column. So um, the, if we dictionary style index it, this results in a series. Okay, so we have data at the position area yields a series because underlyingly this was always a series. And well, if we return it, well, we get this very series. Um, we can also dereference. We can't even. We, we can go for data index area. We can also data dot area dereference. Um, Pandas allows that, um, but obviously it leads to side effects, right? What is the side effect? Well, the reason why I just named this column T because if we call data dot T, this doesn't give me our T column, um, but it gives me the transpose because like in NumPy. The attribute dot t yields me the transpose. So our data dot t doesn't return this column, um, but simply transposes it. And because you can never be certain what, um, well, you can be certain, but you shouldn't be, um, what uh, attributes are there in your Python, uh, in your Pandas data frame, don't dereference, just go for the, um, go for indexing. Okay, yes. So, and if we see this basically as this mixture of a two-dimensional number array and or a Python dictionary, um, well, the array-like um, observations that uh, we can do in, uh, from pandas, uh, from numpy arrays, we can do for the data frame too. So again, to swap rows and column, we can use the dot transpose attribute with swaps rows and columns, which is something really, really useful in pandas. Okay. Um, so for our array style indexing using, uh, for example, slices, Pandas again uses the log and iLog indexes, indexes, and we want to use them all the time. And yeah, if you use the iLog, we basically see our NumPy array uh, or Pandas data frame as a two-dimensional NumPy array, just the same as we called everything we do on this um, data frame dot values, um, but the data frame index and column labels are maintained. So data.ilog um, from the zeroth until the third one and from the zeroth until the second. So the first one is obviously row, the second one is column, uh, returns me this. Whereas if I would go for um, data.values, ah, being true, this would be, well, the values are the same, but we lose our column names and row labels. So um, this is why Pandas is so useful, because no matter the operation you do, Pandas always retains um, the indexes. And that's really useful, because um, you don't, you, you, you uh, in, in NumPy, if you, for example, delete columns, you can't, you can't reuse your original index, right? If you, if you deleted this column, now everything which would be at this column is now at this column. And in Pandas, this doesn't occur because it simply keeps the explicit where this column was named pop. And if you want to access the data at the column pop, you can simply do it by calling data log pop. Um, just like that. So we can't even access, so we can not only access them, um, obviously, using um, like one column, but we can also slice the columns using data.log. So this here yields the data frame until the row Illinois and until the column population. So all the rows, because in explicit indexing, the final one is included and the first two columns. Yeah. Um, so and then we can even um, combine our indexing here. So this here yields all rows. So basically um, the same as before, but explicitly we say all rows and give me two columns. This is fancy indexing, namely area and population. So we can combine our slicing and our fancy indexing and stuff and stuff and stuff. And this is how we would get a row normally. So to get a row, to be explicit, about that we want to have a row from this, we call our data frame at the location and then the name of a row and we want to get all columns. 
And this then creates a new series object because underlyingly there wasn't such a series object because this is one series and this is one series and this here isn't. This is uh, one element out of two series which are aligned under the name California. Um, and we get it like this. Okay. Um, yes, we can also add a new column by simply say, well, the, our data frame at the position density is now, so the position density doesn't exist, so Pandas adds it. And this is now the vectorized calculation, which takes every value from the population column and every value from the area column, aligns them, so checks if they have the same indices, and then creates it. And to, for example, then get um, the ones where the population density is over 100 and get the population and the density of that, where well, we can use our data to log which is a mask here. So this creates um, a Boolean array of all the ones where data to density is bigger than 100. And this then selects two columns of that. So New York and Florida have a population density of more than 100, and we get the columns like this. OK. Now confusing again, indexing refers to columns in Pandas data frames, and slicing refers to rows. So if we simply have data at the position area, um, we get, well, the column, the index, but if we slice, we couldn't go from area until population, um, because if we slice, we have, we go by the rows. So we can go for the slice Florida until Illinois, that works. Again, it's really annoying, and I don't know why it is, but you simply use log and iLog, and then you're always certain. So be explicit, say data.log, and then say, I want all the rows, and I want these columns, and then it works perfectly. OK, um, if you want to have only a single member, you can use um, the attribute at, which is faster than using the location attribute. So this is basically the same as here. Um, just that the add is optimized for not getting slices, but for only getting um, a, sing a single index. So this is a bit faster, and if you do it often enough, you will actually feel the difference. Yo. Um, Boolean indexing, so works basically also the same as numbers. So we have our random list of dates and some columns here again, and we add um, a new column, which is one, two, three, one, two, three. And then um, we simply s mask this. So, so what is our mask? Our mask is that we want to get all the values, all the rows of our data frame, where E is either one or two, could be these two and these two. Oh, it's not. Why is it not? That's confusing. Oh, no, it is. Um, OK, so these and these. And we can simply set them all to numpy dot not a number. And if we simply assign a value here, we assign a scalar to a row, um, which is basically a scalar to a series, which creates a new series, blah, blah, which makes all the values here not a number. And thus, um, we, will, we can. Um, delete all these values, and checking them again, just like in NumPy, we can use pandas.is not a number, and this dot is not a number returns um, a value for every single element, which we then can combine using um, this dot any, which obviously, as we see, if we call x is equals 1, this is the x equals columns, columns. Works the same as in columns. So we check if in these columns, no, we want to have rows, right? No, we want to have columns. We check if in these columns there's a value of not a number. These are not columns, right? So we have number here, here, and here, and here, and here. This doesn't make any sense. So we go for the rows. So x equals 1 is rows. Let's say columns. 
Okay, so this works exactly counterintuitive, as we see. So if we say equals equal one in columns, then we get um, for all the rows, if it's true or false. So this obviously contains no number. This does, this doesn't, this does, does, does. And we can remove these not a number once by simply um, saying, well, give me all the rows of this data frame where it's not the case that, well, this here is true. So that's not the case that any of the values or all are not a number, um, which then yields me the one where the not a number are not there anymore. So if you have a study and, I don't know, you need your participants to answer all your questions and somebody didn't answer all the questions and you need to remove this data point, this is how you do it. But because this is a really popular scenario for pandas, which occurs many times, pandas also have this drop in A which simply drops all the ones, all the rows where there's not a number in there. Um, even with arguments of if you want to remove all the values or the rows or the columns or whatever. Okay, one new exercise, write a pandas snippet to get the names and scores of the people where the number of attempts in the examination is greater than two as a list. So I want to get the ones where this number of attempts is greater than two, where which is obviously three, and then get the names and scores as a list. Or oh, actually, I think it's as a dict. Because in the end, I return a dict. All right, so what we do here is, well, we want to get the values of our data frame where the attempts, where the value for attempt is bigger than two, and then in the end, we want to get the name and the score. So this here doesn't return a dictionary, but a pandas data frame again. And if we wanted to have a dictionary, um, we'd have to play around a bit with the indices and simply, well, I will get to this in the very next thing because this here is indexing. And we set the index to the name. So this deletes this year's index and makes this year the index. Um, as we see here, so our name is now the index. Then we, want to, then we only want to get the score, which automatically gets the name too, because where the index is always there. And then we simply make the dictionary calling the to dict. Um, so indexing. Um, before um, going through the set index and stuff, let's first think about um, what we wanted to do or what we wanted to have if we wanted to have more than two dimensions. So like I said, Pandas provides the CBS and the data frame for one, for one and two dimensional data. And Pandas does have objects that natively handle three and four dimensional data. However, nobody ever uses them because there are better libraries for that. And Actually, you don't use them because you barely ever need them. But what's far more common in pandas is to use hierarchical indexing or multi-indexing. So what you can do is you can simply incorporate multiple index levels within a single index, which is kind of what we did here already. Um, not the bit. Because where well, we have Okay, this is rather the name of this index, and then we have these indexes, indices here. Okay, this is rather not what we did. But so we can have multiple indices within a single index. And with this, higher dimension data can be compactly represented. So imagine we wanted to have as indices where the state as well as um, the year, which is 2000 or 2010, and provide this, this as a Panda series or data frame. So if we had it like this, 
where now it works, now we have an index which is California at the year 2000 and California at the year 2010. This is there, but it, it's annoying. And Pandas has a nicer way of doing that by calling, um, by creating a new multi-index from these tuples which we created over the years. So this takes all, this takes a list of tuples and creates a multi-index from this. And this then is a new multi-index object. And what we see here is that we have two levels, which are this here at the first and this here at the second one. And then it also has the codes of when to use which index. So it combines the devoth element of the first one with the, with the devoth element here. So there's an index California in the year 2000, which is this and this. Then it can also combine the zeroth element here with the first here. So there's an index California in the year 2010. It can combine the first index from here with the zeroth one here. So there's New York in 2000. Then there's New York in 2010. And then there's Texas in 2000. And then there's Texas in 2010. So this is how you would read this multi-index object. And if we re-index our um, population series using this multi-index, we get something really nice. So we have California as first index, the year as second index, and then the value there. And this is, um, I said before, um, that our index can have names. And if we now made, um, called this, what was it, index.names? Now we have two names because our index has two dimensions, basically. And using this, our, we gave our index even names. Yay. OK. Um, and then if we want to access values from that, what we can do is, well, we can call the copulation at the index California and 2000. So this gets this, this, and then does this value, and this, this, which gets this value. Um, this is not as easy with the iLog attribute because iLog simply numbers them from start to finish again. So iLog is one, zero, one, two, three, four, five. So if we want to use iLog, we couldn't use our hierarchical index, but we would have to go for the overall number because it's still somehow underlyingly um, one dimensional, right? So this is still, they are not in a grid, they're still only in a list, but we have this multiple index thingy. Um, so it's still underlyingly one dimensional thing. We can just access it using our multi index. Yes, and we can see our multi index as an extra dimension. So we could have stored this data using a data frame because we can have, well, the state in the x axis and uh, the y axis, the year in the x axis, or vice versa, and then the population in the cells. So this is basically the same as a two-dimensional data frame with index and column labels. And Pandas knows that and can simply convert this multi-index series to a normally indexed um, data frame using the um, unstack and stack methods. So population.unstack creates a two, like a two-dimensional normal data frame from this. So we have the state names here and the values here. Um, but we gave our indices even names. So this index here has the name year, and this index here has the name state. If we wouldn't do that, um, so if we, add names for this, which is basically the same as now, Stack this one. This was look even the way we wanted to have it look before. So if there's additional labels here, it may be that your index has a name too. This is sometimes confusing, and you can just simply reset it by setting the names to none again. So we could basically create this index, we could also say index.names equals none, none, and that would have the same effect. We could even um, do that after we created the, um, so we could even pop.unstack and then um, set the pop.index, 
port dot. I'm not sure if this works now because this is already a NumPy um, a data frame. And it did. I <coughs> know oh, it's not a data frame already. So yeah, this works the same way. Okay, um, we can also uh, basically transpose that by saying well unstack at the level equals zero. This is the same as calling the normal unstack and then transposing it, right? So level equals one or zero is, uh, so if we have level zero, that's the same as the transpose of that. And this created a data frame, and if we stack that, we again make our two-dimensional um, index, 2, 2D indexed, um, well, two-dimensional multi-indexed um, series again of that. Only that we swapped here the first and the second index because we unstacked at level equals zero and then stacked it with level equals whatever the default value is again. Okay. Um, what uh, the next thing we can do is where well, we can uh, turn the index labels into columns by using the reset index method. This is basically um, what I did in the sample solution of this year. I set explicitly set the index because normally this here used to be the index, but then now I say, well, make this column here the index, and what you make of this column, I don't know or okay. care. Um, so this we can explicitly set the indices. Um, blah blah blah. Calling, calling this on a dictionary. We saw it in a data frame. Blah, blah 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 blah. Okay, so if we have our population series again, we can write explicitly name the indices. Well, I just showed you that, right? Um, and then I can reset the index again. So, da, 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 da. so this here again, it's a series. Uh, so this is a series, and if I reset the index and say, well, you now have one index. Oh, wait, how do? Um, oh yeah, you have to name the last column here. So these two columns already have names, and then I reset the index saying, well, this used to be an index, it's not anymore. So we set the index to nothing. Um, what's left here is that this column doesn't have a name, so I have to name this column explicitly. And this then creates from the series a data frame where it makes a new index, which is if we don't tell it what the new index will be is simply um, um, uh, zero until whatever the uh, amount of values is. And then we made, from this index, we made columns and we named this column, so we create a two-dimensional data frame which is indexed from our two-dimensional, uh, from our double index indexed um, series. How does it know what? Because that's the only one that doesn't have a name. Well, it does have an explicit order here, and it use, reuses this order. So if I don't name it, this simply has the name zero, because well, it didn't have a name, and then Pandas names it starting at zero, just like it does the rows. If the other ones didn't have indices, like the question is, what would happen if I would provide a list um, and this list doesn't have the correct length, but I think that just would throw an error and then that's it. So yeah, if I wouldn't, put, like it works if I don't provide it, but um, it just doesn't have a name and I want to give this column a name. Um, yeah, so um, blah, 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 blah. We want to build a multi index from the column values, and this is done using the set index method, which returns a multiple index data frame. So we can also have multiple index data frames, and this looks then basically like this. So we have our population flat, which we created here. So this is our population flat, and we want to set the index because, well, Imagine we read this out from just some uh, CSV or Excel list or whatever, and then we have as indices these numbers, and we don't like 
why do you have these indices? We don't want them. We can explicitly set the index and say, well, your index is the state and the year. This creates a new multi-index for our two-dimensional data frame. Um, and then this data frame obviously only has one column left because this is the only column which is not used as index. I could just as much um, set only one index. I don't know if that's supposed to be a... Yeah. And then I have two columns and I could also like, remove this name again and then I would have a normal data frame. But yeah, so this is a multi-index data frame. And then I can, um, because I have the name of the indices here, imagine I was annoyed by that, I can simply rename them to none. And now this looks like a normal data frame besides the fact that I have this two-dimensional index still, or multi-index here. Yes, um, if I unstack that, I again flip uh, I again make from this multi-index make a two-dimensional normal data frame. So this is possible. And if I had multiple, so this here, if we look at the columns, so imagine we created this here, okay? So this is simply the unstacked version. So this makes this multi-index here uh, two-dimensional. But then there's still this population column and it makes this, the entire population column to one data frame here. So if I index this, I index it first at population and then I get this data frame as a result, right? So if I asked this new data frame which was created, what are your columns? It tells me, well, first um, there's the population and then under that there's the, number, the year numbers 2000 and 2010 and I can go for population at 2000, and I can go for population at 2010. These are the two values which are possible in this multi-index. Just as much, I can create a new column called area, and now this here, population with the 2000 and 2010 is a multi-index, and this area is not. So if I ask what are your columns again here, um, well, I get a multi-index, sort of multi-index again, I can access it at population at 2000, population at 2010, and area at there is no second index, which is, well, this year, right? So this is how I would access it. Um, really many ways of how this data frame can look like, and if it doesn't look the way you want to look, you want it to look, play around with set index, reset index, um, I don't know, make, unstack it, stack it, rename access to nothing or to whatever you want to have them. Just play around with it until it looks correct to you. So yeah, and if we look here, so our new data frame at area is simply this very serious, and a new data frame at population is this two-dimensional data frame, which has these columns, the year again, because it was multi-indexed, and as well as the, well, the very same indices as in the series for area. Okay, so there are many ways of how this may look and it's sometimes confusing, but it's just when well, it follows rules and if you know the rules, it works. Okay, um, look at our pop flat again, which we created by unstacking somehow. Um, what do we do here? Well, we only want to have the state as an index. So we remove this index and say, well, the state is now the index and we don't want the name state here anymore because I don't know, it looks annoying. So this looks annoying, I don't want to have it, and thus I rename the access to none. And this is now a nice um, data frame. Okay. Yes, and if I reset the index of this here, I get the same as my flat one. Because I have many ways to make index indices and set them somewhere else and thus sort the data set anew and make individual, like put individual columns out of the data frame, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. Um, yeah, mate, this is either the last or the last but one um, abstract for today, reading series in data frames. So having them all in my memory and creating them using dictionaries is, well, obviously not really useful if I work with data sets. So how do I load data sets into pandas? Luckily, that's really easy. 
So imagine I have this data set of Pokemon. Um, so this here simply looks at this CSV file called Pokemon, and there's just like it's a comma separate value, it's comma separate value values file, right? So we have the number of the Pokemon, the name of the Pokemon, the first type for Bulbasaur, it's grass, for the second type, it's poison, and then the stats and the fact if it's a, uh, like the generation and then if it's a legendary or not. And how do I read the CSV? So this CSV is simply here, right? So this is a Pokemon.csv. Um, how do I read this? Well, easiest thing in the world, there's simply a pandas method, pandas.readcsv which then reads my CSV file. So if we now look at our data frame, pandas read it in, um, providing a new index. So like I said, the number here is not what pandas takes as the index. Pandas makes a new index. If you read a CSV or an Excel file or any file, pandas simply makes a new index and um, numbers them from zero until whatever you want to have. If you want uh, to provide the index column, I think you can, yeah, it's index cal, and now it uses the first column, not the zeroth, that was stupid, um, as an index. So it works like this too. But now we have the problem that Venusaur and Venusaur Mega, for example, uh, have the same index, so we don't want that right now. So we just want an explicit index for everyone. So 800 rows, uh, 800 Pokemon. And this is from last year. Was there a new generation last year? Are there, no, are there more Pokemon even now? I don't know, but there are many. Okay, so imagine this is a random data set and we don't know what's in there. What would we do? Um, what are the first steps we do? The, well, the first one, we look only at its head because this data set may have tens of thousands of items and head only gives me the first five. And because uh, Jupiter also renders it nicely. I see, aha, uh -huh, uh -huh. So this is some data set which has a name, a type, blah, blah, blah. And so one, a so few of these columns obviously have strings. A few of these columns have integer values. The last one has booleans. I can see all that. I can even um, call the dot describe method from pandas, which describes me all the number based columns. We see it only describes the number based columns. So we don't see the name here in this one. We don't see the type one or two, and we don't see the legendary the fact if it's legendary or not, because it only works. This describe only works for number-based columns, and this yields mean the count, the mean, deviation, the minimum, the percentiles, and the maximum. So, the um, maximum special defense of any Pokemon is 230. And the minimum special defense is like uh, five. Oh boy, is that Carpador? It's probably Carpador. Okay. Um, oh no, it's 20, not five. But yeah. So this describes all the columns, and we see like what are the averages? Is something totally out of the norm? Is the standard deviation is too high? And so on and so on. So this describe is really useful if you have a new data set. And for all the columns, which are not described by describe, which are the text-based ones, we can, for example, go for the value counts. So we see here that if we look at the value counts of, this, of the type one, so this data frame, the position type one, returns a series, and series.value counts, where it returns all the strings and the number of times they occur. So we see, aha, there are many water Pokemon, and there are only really few flying Pokemon. Um, and we could do the same for type two, for the names, but for the names it's rather useless because they have individual names, right? Um, so there would be a lot of ones. And for, for example, the legendary factor, status if it's a legendary or not. Um, so there are 65 legendary Pokemon, that's a lot. Okay, um, yeah, just as much, like I said, we can um, say, well, there is already an index in the data set, so please use this one. Use the first column as your index. And then if we look at the last ones, we see um, that the last number of Pokemon is 721, because we, for example, also count like this confined and unbound, whatever this means, or the mega um, evolutions we count. Um, there is a row for the mega evolutions, but we count them as a new Pokemon. So this Charizard here, all have the number six, but they're different lines. So they're 800 lines, but only 721 different Pokemon. OK, 
Okay, if we reset the index, we see where, like I said, 800 lines, but only 721 different Pokemon. So what we can do, for example, in this data set is we can drop the duplicates um, and we say, well, but only look at this column. So this will drop all these ones, which are where the second in number, right? So it will see that there's already this Hooper Hooper confined with the number 720. And when it reaches the Hooper Hooper unbound form, it says, well, there is already something with the number in there, so I delete it. So if we drop the duplicates, um, we see where the super hooper unbound is gone. And for example, of the Diancy, whatever, there's also one form left only, and so on, so on. And yeah. Oh, okay. Now we would need to delete. Um. Okay, so yeah. Um. Ah, okay, there you go. So now we deleted the original index. So this one starts numbering at one, and this starts at zero, which is why they differ um, with one. But generally, um, now this is the same index. So yeah, um, we set index. Like I said, we set the index. And this drop can drop a column if you say x is equals one. So this drop the index column here. All right. Um, uh, oh, I did this right below. Why do I always do this stuff right below? Sorry? How can we drop the Hooper Hooper just by, you know, for example, that E1, for example, if you have just one editor? So if we would even already have this uh, numbering uh, column, um, we would just want to already add that with the name? Well, you could so set the name as index and then um, drop the row. Which for which you simply call drop with x is equals zero, and then drop the row of where this is Hooper Hooper, or you go for some kind of masking that you say um, df equals. So if I wanted to drop, um, so you can say so like this. I can df equals df uh, the position where the name. It's not, let's say, I drop this Vulcanian. So now I deleted this Vulcanian thingy. So if it's not an index, you can simply use masking to um, remove um, rows. I mean, it, it, it has a different string. So yeah, I, I would. Can so I just say, like, if part of the string is Hoopa Hoopa, then just say, take. Yes, the there are many um, Pandas features for working with strings. We get to that either next week or in two weeks, I'm not sure. So, what you could do, for example, what's useful is to split the name at, the, uh, at a space. I don't know if that makes sense for a Pokemon because I don't know if there are spaces in Pokemon names. Um, but if you, would sp you could split, for example, this column into, um, into two at the space, and then you would have the column of the original name and then of the s closer description, and then you could just um, drop the ones where the closer name thingy is the same. Um, that's what I'm thinking of right now. Like, there are a billion, of, a billion ways to do something like this. Um, yeah, so we have the next two weeks of pandas anyway, too. So this is just the beginning of pandas stuff. 
So yeah, um, this here is the very same thing as I did here, right? Yeah. So to answer your question, I did it already here. Um, good. And now if I want to save this no duplicates, again, I can set the index explicitly right, because I have this index here additionally and I only want this one. And I can export it to a new comma separated value file, CSV file, by simply calling um, dot two CSV method on our data frame. And if we now look at our newly created, we just saw this was created seconds ago, and now at our newly created um, CSV file, where we see that there's now only one Charizard, for example, where there used to be a mega X and mega Y Charizard before. So yeah. Um, we could also, for example, call to Excel, which would create an Excel X, XLSX file from that, just like a CSV file. And Panda says multitude of ways to export to different files or databases or whatever you need. So yeah, exporting to CSVs and Excels is no problem. Yes. Um, what did I do here? I looked at the ones which are from generation one we glitched all the duplicates, so we expect there to be 151, and in fact, there are 151, and it ends with new. This is how I know the first generation, and this apparently works. I don't know why I put it in there. And yeah, um, we could, um, why did I do this? I am not sure right now. So I could also get like, um, so this gets this generation one only at the name. So this gets the number and the name and makes a dictionary out of this. And if we look, if we want to look at the first eight values of that, or the first nine ones, where we do this with this convention, and this basically shows where I created a dictionary from this um, pandas data frame. So this is only to be shorter. This is basically the same as I would print first gen dict, um, but then I would have all rules here. And this is just to show you only the first nine because the row was too long. Okay, now it's 42, and I think I would just um, save the rest for Thursday because it's like, I don't know, half an hour left or something, and then I would be done for today if there are no questions. Okay, then see you on Thursday. <laughs>